Hey guys, welcome to Talk To Me Tuesday, Tuesday, June 17th, 2014. This is Jennifer, and it's been a really long week. I shared with you guys last week that this month there had been surgery, a death in the family, a sick kitty, and now we have a completely different kitty that we lost over the weekend. We had to say goodbye to Merlin, our almost 17-year-old black cat, and it was a really horrible weekend. It was a very sad weekend, and very stressful strained weekend and we already miss him like crazy and I'm gonna do a little tribute at the end of the video but in the meantime I just wanted to say thank you guys um, everyone that has emailed me or posted on my blog or my Facebook or my Twitter or wherever and and sent condolences I really appreciate it um, as you guys probably remember this time last year we lost Tackett the Talk To Me Tuesday cat and about six months before that, we lost our very elderly Calico Kitty, Button. Um, we have had um, six cats as a family. Five of them we had all at the same time, kind of by accident. Uh, Tackett and Merlin, we adopted together. And then, we, well, we adopted them about a year apart, but we had them together. And then we took in two kitties that had belonged to my husband's grandmother when she passed away. So we ended up with four cats. And then several years later, we sort of stumbled into a kitten, which is now Marie, and now we have Marie and Rose, and those are our two kitties that we have now, and over the years we've had to say goodbye to all of the others, and of course that is the way it works, and that's part of life and part of family, but it was a sad weekend following the death of my aunt and everything else that's been going on this month. And I just wanted to thank you guys again for being awesome about it and being really generous in your condolences and your, your thoughts and prayers were very much appreciated. So despite the craziness and the sadness and everything else, life continues to go on and there's still a lot going on that um, I'm trying to keep up with. So I wanted to share some of those things with you. Um, first of all, the things you see on the wall behind me are not things that I made. Um, I showed you some of these stars a couple of weeks ago. Those were a lovely gift that I received for Stars of Linus. And these blocks right here, th this is the signature block pattern for paper piecing vintage. So if you are doing paper piecing vintage, when you get to April, which is my birthday month, you will find this additional pattern and I have invited everyone participating to send a signature block in to be part of a quilt to commemorate paper piecing vintage. This is what I've received so far. Um, I'm hoping to receive more because at last count there were over 200 people participating in paper piecing vintage so I'm hoping to get some more of these by December. The deadline is December because that is the last month of paper piecing vintage and hopefully I will have a whole wall full of these by then. Tomorrow on Fandom and Stitches is our second installment of Summer of Stitching and this week's uh, theme was a little different. Instead of being a specific theme, it was I, Heart, Sci-Fi, and Fantasy. And the idea was that um, anything that we had missed in science fiction and fantasy that you really loved, you could submit a pattern for. We get a lot of requests for a single, like a single request for a sci-fi or fantasy show. So we'll get a lot of requests like for say, there'll be one request for Babylon 5 or one request for Firefly or just one request for something and what we need is not just one request in order to do that but we know that if there's one request there's probably someone else that wants it too so what we're hoping is that people will jump in and sign some things for fandoms that they like that haven't been touched. Um, I am trying to do one pattern per uh, theme just for my own sort of summer goal is to do one pattern per theme and for this week's I am working on a Dresden File uh, quote. I'm a big fan of the Dresden Files by Jim Butcher. It's uh, urban fantasy and I've loved these stories for years. I think they are masterpieces of urban fantasy and they are cleverly disguised as being sort of gritty noir stories but they are actually quite complex and some of the best literature that I have enjoyed in a long, uh, over a long period of time. So if you're looking for something to read and you like fantasy, um, I highly recommend them. So anyway, Jim Butcher, uh, Dresden Files, this is from the first book. And this is the quote that helped me know that I was going to love these stories. This is from the very first book, which is called Stormfront. 
and I'm not quite finished stitching yet. I'm hoping to have it done by tomorrow so I can get it posted with the rest of the um, patterns on Phantom and Stitches. But the quote is, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean there isn't an invisible demon about to eat your face. And so my block looks like this, and you can see I'm not quite done yet. But um, this pattern will be posted on Phantom and Stitches. I'm going to try to get this stitching done today so that I can post it tomorrow because, as you guys know, part of the um, summer of stitching is that you have to have a sample with your pattern. So it's not just patterns, it has to have a sample, and that means a physical sample, not a digital sample, not just a picture that you drew. It has to be tested and everything else. So anyway, this is mine, and I hope to have it finished by tomorrow. The other thing that I have been working on this week is some uh, cosplay stuff. So I've been costuming a little bit. My kids are going to a convention in July called RTX. And I know at least Terry, Snowy44, probably has heard of RTX because I know that Sasha is a big Rooster Teeth fan. RTX takes place here in Austin and it is a huge convention for people that are fans of uh, Rooster Teeth, which they do Red vs. Blue and Ruby and a whole bunch of other stuff. and. Anyway, so my kids are going to cosplay, and both of them are being characters from different video games. And I am uh, almost done with the only piece that I really have to make for my sons is a tactical vest. And um, I wanted to make something. It's going to be July, so it's going to be hot, and I didn't want it to be too heavy. So what I did was, is I googled around and I found a picture of this adorable kid that was maybe five years old dressed up like a police officer and his mom had made him a tactical vest out of pre-quilted black fabric. Um, there wasn't a pattern or anything, it was just a picture and so I used that idea and I went and I got pre-quilted black fabric from Hancock's. Um, I used my coupon that I had so I got it at a discount which was nice and I made this. And I don't know how well this is going to translate since it's solid black, but what I did was it is two, it's, hold on, let me, let me try to do this. It's got Velcro on the sides, so it opens up on both sides. So basically he puts it over his head. It is fully lined, and you can see I put stuffing in the front so that it looks like it's got, you know, the protective padding in it but it's just, it's actually just stuffing. And the way I did that was after I lined each piece individually and then I left the bottom open, sewed it up, attached the tops, and then I sew, I drew on the lines I needed to stitch. I stitched them completely closed. And then on the lining, I cut a slit with really carefully with my scissors, put the stuffing in, and then just sewed the slit closed. And then it's got the Velcro on the sides is what closes it, and I have no idea if you guys are going to be able to see this because of the, it's so dark black. Anyway, so he puts it on. It's made to fit him. I made a paper pattern first, and so it fits him perfectly. And the only thing I have left to do is it's supposed to have a great big um, patch on it, which I haven't made yet, so I'll, I'll get that done today. And this is actually, um, I think it's a security guard from Half-Life. I'm not a video game player. Um, all of my knowledge of video games comes from my kids. I'd rather be quilting, so um, I love to costume, so I don't mind doing this kind of stuff. So the rest of the, the uh, costume he's pretty much put together himself, and he just needed this one accessory, so I've done that for him. And the only other costuming thing I have to do is turn these three t-shirts into one shirt for my daughter and um, make this an orange and black cap instead of just a black cap, which I'm hoping to do with some leftover fabric from this orange t-shirt. Maybe I'll have that to show you next time. And I think that's all I have to show you today. Um, I have been completely slammed with real life, so the little bit of sewing that I have gotten done has been primarily for my kids. Um, the embroidery I've been working on at night when I have a few minutes to sit down and just watch TV and let my brain just disengage. Um, and I think that's it. I am going to put a little bit of uh, a slideshow in here for um, my kitty, and I will see you guys next week.